Hello, my fellow Italians, Kalko here, and I have become obsessed with AI's writing fanfiction, so I decided to make it write some Hitalia fanfiction for me. And boy, were the results amazing. So I'm going to share with you some of my favorites. Enjoy. The first one comes from ChatGPT, and I wrote in the prompt, Write me a weird Hitalia fanfiction. Hitalia's Animal Kingdom, The Spider Nation. Once upon a time, in the world of Italia, a strange phenomenon occurred. Suddenly, all the nations found themselves transformed into animals, with no explanation or reason. America found himself as a bald eagle, flying high in the sky with his newfound wingspan. Italy was now a cute puppy, wagging his tail and licking anyone who came near him. England was a plump and colorful parrot, squawking at everyone in a fit of rage. But the strangest transformation was that of Romania. He had become a giant spider with eight legs and glowing red eyes. He scurried around the room, hissing and clicking, causing all of the other nations to run and hide. No one knew what to do, but then Bulgaria had an idea. He remembered a strange ritual from his homeland, one that might be able to reverse the transformations. He quickly gathered all the other animals together and began to chant in a language no one could understand. At first, nothing happened, but then slowly the animals began to change back into their human forms. America was no longer an eagle, but was once again the confident, boisterous nation. Italy was no longer a puppy, but was back to his usual charming and flamboyant self. Even England had reverted to his usual grumpy self. But Romania, unfortunately, did not change back. He remained a spider, still scurrying around on his eight legs. At first, everyone was afraid of him. But then they realized something strange. Romania was actually kind of cute as a spider. His glowing eyes were now adorable, and his hissing sounded more like purring. The other nations quickly adapted to Romania's new form, and he became their new pet spider. They all would take turns feeding him bugs and giving him pets, and he would happily curl up in their hands, content to be loved and cared for. In the end, the nations realized that even though they were different now, they still could find a way to come together and accept each other for who they were. And Romania, even though he was now a spider, was still a beloved member of their strange and wonderful Hitalia family. The next one had the prompt, write a fanfiction about Romania and Bulgaria. It was their award for the ship of the year. But note, I did not specify that this was supposed to be a romantic fanfiction. But nevertheless, the AI wrote the title, Love in the Land of Vampires and Yogurt, Romania and Bulgaria's Romance. Once upon a time in the world of Italia, Romania and Bulgaria were two neighboring nations that often found themselves at odds with each other. Romania was known for his love of vampires and a snarky sense of humor, while Bulgaria was known for his stoicism and his love of yogurt. Despite their differences, the two nations found themselves spending more and more time together, drawn together by their shared history and culture. Romania would regale Bulgaria with stories of his mythical creatures and ancient legends, while Bulgaria would teach Romania the secrets of making the perfect bowl of yogurt. As they grew closer, their friendship turned into something more. They would spend long nights talking about their hopes and dreams and their countries as futures. Romania would often tease Bulgaria that it was all in good fun, and Bulgaria would just smile and shake his head, knowing that Romania meant no harm. One day, they were strolling through the countryside. They came across a beautiful meadow filled with wildflowers. The sun was setting, casting a warm glow over everything, and Romania turned to Bulgaria with a smile. Hey, Bulgaria, he said softly, taking his hand. Do you ever think about us? About what we are to each other? Bulgaria looked at him, his expression unreadable. What do you mean? Romania took a deep breath. I mean, do you ever think that maybe we could be more than just friends? Bulgaria's eyes widened, and for a moment, he didn't say anything. But then, he smiled, and Romania's heart skipped a beat. I've been thinking the same thing, he said. I just 
didn't know how to say it. They stood there for a moment, just looking at each other. And then Romania leaned in and kissed Bulgaria on the lips. It was a soft, gentle kiss, filled with all the love and tenderness they felt for each other. From that day on, Romania and Bulgaria were inseparable. They continued to bicker and tease each other, but now it was with a new understanding, a deeper connection. And when they weren't busy ruling their respective countries, they would spend their time exploring the world together, hand in hand, their love shining like the sun. So apparently the AI ships Robol. And Franida, apparently, because I asked it to write a random Hetalia romance story and it picked Franida. A while ago on YouTube, I asked for prompts to put into the AI. So now it is your guys' turn to come up with the prompts. Our next fanfiction is titled <clears throat> Straight as an Arrow, The Battle for Hetalia's Straightest Nation. This one, oh, this one, buckle in. The AI thought it would be appropriate to put this in here. It was an argument that had been brewing for a while now, simmering just beneath the surface of the regular world meetings. Finally, one brave nation had spoken up and posed the question that was on everyone's mind. Who among us is the straightest nation? Silence descended upon the room as each nation looked around, sizing up the competition. Some were already rolling their eyes, while others seemed to be considering the question seriously. America was the first to speak. Obviously it's me! I mean, have you seen the way I go on about apple pie and baseball? Italy scoffed. Please, America, you are always talking about how much you love the boys from one direction. I think that disqualifies you from the running. Germany cleared his throat. Hmm. <clears throat> I think we should base this on actual statistics. Perhaps we should take a poll of our citizens and see who has the highest percentage of heterosexuals? The room erupted into an argument as each nation tried to prove their own straightness. England boasted about his traditional values, while France reminded everyone of his many affairs with women. China pointed out that he had a huge population, therefore must have a larger number of straight people. The debate raged on for hours, with tempers flaring and insults flying. Finally, Russia spoke up in his usual stoic voice. Why are we even having this argument? Does it matter who is the straightest among us? There was a moment of stunned silence as each nation considered Russia's words. Slowly, they began to nod in agreement. You're right, Russia, America said. It doesn't matter who's the straightest. We should be celebrating our differences, not fighting over them. With that, the argument was forgotten and the nations went back to their usual business. But for a few moments, they had been caught up in a heated battle over the most insignificant thing imaginable. Okay, that was one of the better ones. I had to cut out a lot of laughter while reading this. Now I'm going to try to combine a bunch of prompts into one, and I'm going to see what happens. The title is Drama, Romance, and Cameos. At the Classic World meeting, the Italian nations decided to put on a play. They chose Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, with France's Romeo and England as Juliet. The rehearsal was going well, until Poland accidentally broke one of the stage lights. Ugh, now I need to replace it before the show complained Neo Poland. Don't worry, I can fix it, said Poland confidently, getting up on a ladder and unscrewing the broken bulb. But as he was trying to screw in a new one, he realized he couldn't quite reach. Neo Poland saw his struggle and offered to help, climbing up on the ladder with him. Together they managed to screw in the new bulb and fix the light. Thanks for the help, Poland said, smiling at Neo Poland. No problem, happy to help, she replied with a smile. Meanwhile, as the nations were preparing for the play, they were surprised by a cameo from the creator of Hitalia himself, Hidekazi Maruya. Excuse me, can someone give me directions to the nearest bookstore? He asked, looking around the room. All the nations were shocked to see him, but they quickly pointed him in the right direction. As he was leaving, they gathered around him, asking for autographs and selfies. Himaruya happily obliged, thrilled to meet his fans in person. As the play finally began, the audience was captivated by the dramatic love story of Romeo and Juliet. France and England played their roles perfectly, bringing tears to many of the nations' eyes. After the show, as the nations were packing up to leave, Poland and Neopoland were still working together, now fixing the stage floorboards. You know, we make a pretty good team, Poland said with a grin. Neopoland chuckled. Yeah, we do. Maybe we should work together more often. Poland smiled at her feeling a strange warmth in his chest. Maybe this was the start of 
something new between them. As they left the meeting room, the nations were still buzzing about their exciting day. They had put on a great play, met their idol, and maybe even witnessed the beginnings of a new romance. It was just another day in the crazy world of Italia. Okay, so now the AI ships Frock and Poland with himself. This next one also combines two requests. Title, Snowed In. The snowstorm had hit unexpectedly, leaving two Hetalia characters, Canada and Norway, stranded in a remote cabin. With no way out, they were forced to make the best of the situation. As night fell, they realized there was only one bed in the cabin. Canada blushed furiously, and Norway awkwardly cleared his throat. They had no choice but to share a bed, but decided to make it as comfortable as possible. As they settled into the bed, Canada suggests they pass the time by playing card games. Norway agreed, and soon they were deep in a heated game of poker. They played for hours, the stakes getting higher and higher. With each round, their competitiveness grew, and they argued over the most insignificant things imaginable. Canada argued that the snow outside was more beautiful than the northern lights, while Norway insisted that the northern lights were a natural wonder that could not be surpassed. Their arguments escalated, and soon they were yelling at each other, forgetting that they were sharing the same bed. Canada accused Norway of cheating, while Norway called Canada a sore loser. They were both so caught up in the game that they didn't realize how close they were getting. Finally, after hours of intense gameplay, Canada declared victory. Norway begrudgingly admitted defeat, and they both collapsed onto the bed, exhausted and a little bit exhilarated. As they lay there, catching their breath, they realized that they had been arguing over nothing. They laughed, feeling silly and embarrassed for getting so worked up over such a trivial matter. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. It was the owner of the cabin, who had come to rescue them from the snowstorm. Canada and Norway hastily packed their things and left the cabin, feeling grateful for the experience, but also relieved to be heading back to their own countries. As they parted ways, Canada and Norway looked at each other, a silent understanding passing between them. They had shared a moment, one that they would never forget, even if it was just over a game of cards in a Snowden cabin. Nor can? Really, AI? I think it keeps drawing from the previous entries. The next fanfiction is titled, The Meeting of Minds, an American-Russian Encounter, from this prompt. An American and a Russian walk into a room. What happens next is shocking. The two nations were attending a diplomatic meeting at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. Tensions between the two countries were high, and everyone was on edge. As they entered the conference room, the American, Alfred F. Jones, noticed that Ivan Braginsky, the Russian delegate, seemed different. His usual stoic expression was replaced by a look of confusion and disorientation. Hey, Ivan, are you okay? Alfred asked, concerned. I... I don't know, Ivan replied, shaking his head. I feel... strange. Suddenly, Ivan collapsed onto the floor, clutching his head in pain. Alfred rushed to his side, trying to help him, but it was too late. Ivan had already passed out. The room was in chaos as everyone tried to figure out what had happened. The medical team rushed in, and Ivan was quickly whisked away to the hospital. Alfred was left alone in the room wondering what could have caused Ivan's sudden collapse. As he looked around the room, his eyes fell on a strange device that had been left on the table. It was a small black box, with strange symbols etched into the surface. Alfred picked it up, and as he did, he felt a strange energy coursing through his body. At that moment, Alfred had realized what had happened. The device was a mind control device, capable of manipulating the thoughts and emotions of those nearby. Ivan had been affected by the device, but Alfred's strong willpower had allowed him to resist its effects. With this newfound knowledge, Alfred quickly alerted the other nations, and together they were able to locate the source of the mind control device and destroy it, preventing any further damage. In the aftermath of the incident, Ivan and Alfred grew closer, having bonded over the traumatic experience. They realized that despite their differences, they were not so different after all. They continued to work together towards a peaceful resolution, determined to prevent such an incident from happening again. The shock of the incident had changed them both, but they emerged stronger for it, with a newfound respect for each other and power of their own minds. I had a lot of really interesting prompts, but I have to cut this video pretty short. And also some of the stories ended up pretty generic. So I'm going to go through one final story. I told ChatGPT to write a Hitalia crackfic. 
It was another day at the world meeting, and the nations were gathered to discuss important matters. However, something seemed off. The atmosphere was tense, but not in the way that it usually was during important negotiations. Suddenly, France jumped up from his seat, waving a baguette in the air. Mi ami, I have a confession to make, he declared dramatically. I am not actually French. The room erupted in gasps and murmurs. Italy, who had been sitting next to him, looked at him in shock. But, but you speak French so well, he exclaimed. France shrugged. It is all an act, mon ami. I've been pretending to be French for years. The truth is... I'm actually a Scottish Highlander. The other nations looked at him in disbelief. But before anyone could say anything, Germany stood up. Well, I have a confession too, he said. I'm not actually German. There was another round of gasps and murmurs. Italy looked around nervously. Wait, if you're not German, then... Then who are you? He asked. Germany smiled mischievously. I am actually an alien from another planet. The other nations stared at him in shock, but before anyone could say anything, Russia stood up. I have a confession to make too, he said in his usual quiet tone. Everyone turned to look at him, waiting for him to reveal his secret. After a moment of silence, he spoke. I am actually a robot, he said flatly. The room fell silent. No one knew what to say. Finally, America broke the silence. Well, I have a confession too, he said. I'm actually a superhero! The other nations stared at him incredulously, but before anyone could say anything, England stood up. I have a confession as well, he said. I'm not actually English. I'm a wizard. At this point, the room had descended into chaos. Nations were all standing up, shouting their own ridiculous confessions at each other. Canada revealed that he was actually a ninja, while Japan claimed that he was actually a samurai. As the meeting dissolved into madness, Italy sat back in his seat and watched the chaos unfold. I knew there were always a bunch of crazies, he muttered to himself before leaning back and enjoying the show. Honestly, I think that one ties with the straight as an arrow fanfic. And that's all that we have today. Let me know if you want to see more AI-generated fanfictions in the comment section below, but until then, keep on studying!